So what we've got here is two PlayStation 3s, but one of them being completely frozen in time, and then the other one being a standard super slim model, running the latest games and the latest firmware, and just being a gaming device. This one having a much different story. I mean, it was part of the U.S. Air Force's Condor cluster, being a workhorse, just running Linux 24-7, and then being recently retired and then sold off on eBay, part of a government surplus. But the thing is, this thing hasn't been touched, played, or updated in over 10 years. It's running firmware 2.52, which came out November 2008. And so I think this is a great, unique opportunity to really compare the two. Uh, what's it like uh, with a modern PlayStation 3 versus one that we were playing and actually trying to game on uh, back in 2008? Now, as I just mentioned, we already did an unboxing on this PS3 and fired it up, so go check that out. But again, a quick recap on this model. It's a 160 gigabyte model originally, CECHP01, uh, and it came originally with uh, Uncharted, uh, Pain download code, and uh, you know, it was minor internal changes. This was already well after Sony removed the Chrome trim, the card readers, lowered it to two USB ports, and of course took out that very important PS2 backwards compatibility. But this is basically one of the last fat PlayStation 3 models. This is where they got the die size down from, I believe, 90 nanometers to 65 nanometers. It's uh, lower power consumption. So it's basically one of the last fat models that were available. But interestingly enough, as old as this PS3 is, it still has a lot of major features that gamers were asking for back in the day that still are very relevant to the uh, current PS3 and current firmware of today, so you'll be surprised that there's not that much of a difference between the two, but I think what's actually more fascinating, and I unfortunately can't demonstrate that too well, is all the firmware features before 2.52, so let's actually get caught up to that first and discuss uh, that evolution a little bit before this PS3 actually came around. So 1.10 was basically the launch firmware that everyone started with on PS3 during the console's release in November of 2006. And oddly enough, 1.10 allowed the system to use PlayStation Network service and download files from the web browser, download games from the PlayStation Store, and other minor settings regarding CD output frequency and color reduction filter and things like that. This kind of goes back to like when PlayStation 4 first came out and people were really off put by the day one update and Microsoft had to do this as well with the Xbox One to get rid of all those uh, DRM policies and features and things like that. You know, day one updates aren't unusual. They happen pretty much all the time now with most game releases and even hardware releases. And uh, it's funny to see that without 1.10, you couldn't connect to PSN or oddly enough, download files from the web browser. Going up to 1.50, we saw the addition of USB camera support for video chat, and that's going to be a common theme with the PS3 over the years, is that not only was Sony very supportive of different uh, file codecs and devices, but they just really made this thing the ultimate media hub, the ultimate device hub, and you'll be surprised what we'll uh, be talking about in a second. Now, going into 1.60, this was the first really substantial update that didn't come till March 2007, and this is the update that finally added background downloading. So, if you bought a PS3 at launch in November of 2006, you couldn't download a game or a demo from the PlayStation Store in the background until March. So that's crazy to think about, is that you buy this $600 system, and then it takes four months to be able to actually download a demo and do something else with the platform, right? Otherwise, it was just stuck there, and you had to wait for that download to finish. 1.60 also added folding at home, and this was the program that allowed users to volunteer their PS3's computing power for protein folding, and this contributed to the advancement of medical research for cancer, Alzheimer's, and more. And so that's another thing to note here is that we've got folding at home, but there's some other very noticeable admissions about the PlayStation 3. Going into 1.7, this added support for PS1 Classics. 1.8 was a smaller quality of life situation, so there was a lot of those on PlayStation 3. Uh, for general functionality to music, photo, video, and settings. 1.9 finally allowed a background picture instead of the XMB. And so this didn't come until July of 2007. So keep in mind, ironically, the PS3 off the bat is already a pretty great media hub, but you're waiting this long for things like downloading things in the background or personalizing the actual screen that you see every single time you boot up the platform. 2.0 also added the support for rumble functionality for the upcoming DualShock 3, because remember, when Sony launched the PlayStation 3, it came with just a six axis controller with no rumble support whatsoever. And the company tried to downplay that a little bit saying, oh, we don't need rumble anymore. It's last gen technology but really this was because of an ongoing legal battle with the haptic feedback company Immersion. And so they were really doing a lot of damage control, and if you remember, the 6-axis controllers were super light, and uh, it felt like you could crack them and break them quite easily, but sure enough, once their uh, settlement was all well and done, came the DualShock 3 with rumble support. 2.0 also added Canon printer functionality, and yes, you heard that right, one of the many unknown features of the PlayStation 3 is that you can connect a printer to the thing and print photos. I feel like not many people really know that at all, but you can do it. 
2.0 was also the addition of where we saw the information bar in the top right corner, and so a lot of people really disliked that. I always turned mine off back in the day, I remember that thoroughly. Uh, I always found it to be pretty jarring and visually annoying and didn't really go with the flow of the XMB, but I know a lot of people really enjoyed the information bar before it was changed, and we'll get to that in a second. 2.10 added the voice changer, and I'm sure many of you remember how annoying that was when you got into an online lobby. 2.3 added the redesigned PlayStation Store, and boy do I miss that storefront so much, just because it was so snappy, so quick, uh, everything was very uniform, it was clean looking, it was snappy, it was responsive, maybe I should just say that maybe five or six more times, because god I miss that storefront, it was so good. Now 2.40 was a big day though, this was the start of trophy collecting for PlayStation users. The first supported game was Super Stardust HD with a patch. In-game XMB finally came as well, so for the longest time, if you wanted to respond to a message or check your friends, you had to quit the game entirely. The friends list also went from 50 to 100 as well, but let's really sink this in for a second. The PlayStation 3 got printer support before it got trophy collecting and in-game XMB to message your friends to coordinate lobbies and things like that. You know, the actual game functionality of the console. Printers came first. 2.50 was a lot more quality of life updates, mostly to settings, and finally we come to 2.52, again a minor improvement, bug fixes, uh, performance improvements, that's typically what happens when it's not a, a round whole number or a half increment number, and uh, that's up to, what, like we've been saying, November 2008. And you can see the PS3 in its early years was missing a lot of key features that, amongst other things, is what made it seem like lesser hardware to the Xbox 360 for its time. And it really was strange when the system was consistently getting updates for all these video codecs, music settings, and Blu-ray support support, and yet the gaming features were like far and few between. But now moving away from the 2.52 console, let's really discuss what has 11 years of updates done to the PlayStation 3. Firmware 2.60 added the photo gallery, and this was a cool little app you could use to move around your photos, check them out, um, I believe you could add them a little bit as well, but it was very much so an upgraded uh, suite to look at your photos and go through them, run some slideshows. 3.0 is the point where Sony redesigned the XMB and gave us the What's New section. I believe this is also when they added the sparkles to the XMB, but uh, the most dramatic change, of course, being the What's New section. This is when the information board is now gone, and upon boot of every single time, you would be brought to that What's New section with the panning over little boards, kind of showing you some upcoming releases and things like that, where you could start games right from that little section right there. But certainly, they're changing the, the dynamics of how you boot up the system and how you kind of interact with it on a day-to-day -day basis. 3.15 added data transfer via an Ethernet cable. This was also pretty important. This was Sony doing a lot of really thing, like a lot of weird things that I think many people maybe wouldn't expect Sony to do. Um, a very major quality of life thing where you don't think you need it until you find yourself in a situation where you do. And it was very handy if you were changing PlayStation 3s and you had both models sitting right there with brand new hard drives and you could just change it over instead of backing up and restoring that way. 3.21 infamously removed the other OS feature. So this is one, of course, Sony was very worried about uh, possibly some exploits or uh, the PlayStation 3 dealing with piracy or what have you, if it opens the, you know, the, the firmware a little too much. It was a number of things, really. That's why Sony explored uh, just getting rid of it eventually, and that's when the lawsuit happened, and eventually it was actually settled to the point where if you did have an original PlayStation 3, you were entitled to a check for, like, $10, something like that. I actually even filed for it because I still have a 60 gig uh, gigabyte launch model and I got my $10 out of Sony and that's even despite the fact that I didn't even really ever use other OS. So uh, I just wanted $10. But 3.30, this included 3D support for games and so this is when Sony was making a big push turning the PlayStation 3 into a 3D stereoscopic gaming uh, machine. At the, that point, they also released a 3D TV. A lot of their games were going with 3D support, so you can see what they were doing there. 3.40, this added video editing, and then PlayStation Plus, uh, and then trophy levels in your friends list as well. That was kind of another update that you think was pretty significant for its time, so this is where Sony kind of really uh, fleshed out the trophy system a little bit, but PlayStation Plus launching uh, was kind of a big deal for its time. At the very least, uh, this was Sony starting their own, you know, service, uh, and this is what we have today where it's mandated on PlayStation 4. Back then it wasn't required, and it was purely just a reward service where you got discounts and free games. 3.50 is where 3 Blu-ray support for movies came. 
and then grief reports for bad players online. So if somebody was harassing you or something, you could file a grief report. This was something, of course, Microsoft has been doing for a long time, but one of those things where eventually it comes to PlayStation 3. 3.60 added online cloud storage, exclusive to PlayStation Plus members. 3.61, this was a big one as well because this was the firmware required to change your PSN password after that 2011 PSN intrusion. So this was pretty important. When you uh, signed back onto your PlayStation 3, connected online, you had to download this firmware, and when you finally got back into the network, you were forced to change your password, and then that's when you were also into the Welcome Back program, where you were given a selection of free games because Sony owed them to you. 3.70 officially added a new tab to the XMB TV and video services, so before then, things like Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, NFL Sunday Ticket, whatever it was, right? That was funneled under the video tab. Uh, part of your videos that were saved locally to the hard drive. So Sony instead found it better to just to uh, create its own separate tab on the XMB. 4.0 added PlayStation Vita support for content management and re remote play and things like that. And then pretty much anything after 4.0 was really just quality of life updates, uh, very minor compatibility, setting adjustments, system performance, closing up new exploits all the way up to 4.84 today. And so that's really some of the major highlight features. Everything in between those are things that we didn't really mention. Again, they were very minor things. And you'll be surprised how often Sony was either adding new languages to the PS3 or you know, just messing around with the compatibility of the web browser, adding uh, updated flash support, again, more video codecs, uh, Blu-ray support was constantly touched on over and over and over again, um, CD support. It was kind of amazing how they were so on top of things like that, yet in reality, a lot of major gaming features were really left behind and they took much longer to actually come to the hardware. Now, there's gotta be a reason for something like that, although I would have to imagine a big part of it is that a lot of the resources behind the firmware team were very much so still part of the original vision of PlayStation 3, which is that they wanted to make it an absolute media hub. And for somebody like me in that time, I certainly enjoyed it a lot. In fact, I did a video on that as well, where I said, this is why I enjoy PS3 more than PlayStation 4, which is that I really miss the fact that my PlayStation console for its time was a media hub. And I can't really do that anymore with PlayStation 4 uh, because you can't save the content locally to the hard drive and there's just not that much support for uh, some of the codecs and whatnot. I mean, it's just not really a platform made for that. And times have changed, so I understand that's the case. But uh, that explains why PlayStation 3 was just so good at those things, is that Sony was constantly staying up to date on all of those things for the hardware. Now, I don't remember exactly what firmware changed this, but I really love the older firmwares on PS3 where if you were playing a video that was saved locally to the hard drive, you could press the PlayStation button and you could navigate through the XMB and the video would still play. At some point when the firmware was updated, Sony paused the video every single time you hit the PlayStation button and there was no way to change that. So I rather enjoyed having a video play and then message somebody or, you know, just scroll through another video or scroll through photos or something. I really missed that because the audio would still play and since the XMB is transparent, you would still be able to see the content. And so I actually really missed that as well. I think the number one thing I missed the most though about older firmwares is that you had the blacked out XMB look and sure the sparkles are nice or what have you, but when they updated the XMB, they got rid of the black options. So it was just a pure color, whether it was blue, green, red, purple, whatever, but complete black was gone. So I'm actually so happy with the fact that I have this unit now and I can capture a direct feed of that black XMB. I don't know why, but that's like my favorite thing. And now I have some very cool B-roll of just those waves. And uh, that's like the YouTuber me being like, oh yes, I'm so happy I have a uh, high definition like B-roll of that now. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, 2.52, it did have most of the major stuff already. I mean, the two big ones being in-game XMB and trophies, which are now still relevant today on this PS3 and even beyond that on PS4, because let's be honest, between both of these systems, I mean, PlayStation 3 is no longer uh, in production. I mean, it's uh, considered a legacy platform now. But it did have most of the features already, so they caught up a pretty good amount uh, by you know late 2008, where they were really starting to add a lot of things that people really enjoy about uh, gaming to the PS3. It was just kind of a slow start there. And uh, even today on the latest 4.84, it is kind of surprising that um, 
you know, it, it has changed dramatically, but not as nearly as much as I guess you would have expected. But anyway, I think we should wrap up this video. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you haven't yet, of course, please subscribe for the best PlayStation news reviews and updates that are here on YouTube. And you can follow me on Twitter at Mystic Ryan, where I post some gaming shenanigans. And I'm recently posting a lot of pictures of my cat because I'm just turning into one of those people. And I'm totally okay with that, by the way. But I will see you all in my next video. You take it easy. Thank you.